Shall we, shall we start? No? Ladies first? No, say it, because I think it sounds really nice with your accent. Well, Archwell Audio. Arch, yeah. Archwell Audio. I mean... Really? <laughs> shall we? Yeah, let's do it. Today is December 12, 2024. It is 3.10 a.m. This is the third video of the night. The first video was on our part of your service. I spoke about the scattered little soldiers and I read an article about that. And uh, I think I came across a video for Invictus where they're doing uh, curling, preparing for Invictus in Canada. And uh, the first tweet was a picture of a little girl giving Megan flower. So it was only three tweets and I read an article. The second video was Up You Team Sussex, different tweets regarding the derangers, upset about Netflix and all of that. So I kept the negative over there, okay? But here we're gonna talk a little bit more of the positive part of it and the silly talk of the squad, okay? So let's look at the numbers. 4,023 subscribers, new subscribers welcome, estimate revenue, $53.31. I think in this video, while I was searching something, I think regarding this guy, uh, the Indian guy, about something, and uh, I think I said something like uh, uh, Polo started in India. But on the video that I just did, as a matter of fact, I have it open. Uh, I was looking for something where Polo started. That was my question. Where did Polo start? Okay. It started in Persia, which is in Iran. And it was where, um, you know, the military, you know, back then, uh, when uh, it, they fought wars on horses. So to train the military people, they do this type of thing, maneuver f to be able to maneuver the horse and things like that. So uh, they create that and then it went to India. So I would say India would be second. Okay. And then it spread. All right. So I think if I did say it over there, I was reading it. I think I had, I had the screenshot uh, on the screen anyway. I was reading what was there. But on this one where I literally asked where did the polo start? It's in Iran. Okay. So if I did say India, my apology, but I was reading it through that. But this one where I asked specifically, it's Persia, Iran. Okay. So I look at these numbers, analytics, for those who are new, I do that for record purposes, 1,052 views in the last 48 hours. So let's go on Twitter. How many tweets do I have? I say 11 here, but I think it's more than 11 because I kept on adding. So it might be more than 11. I don't want to waste time to, oops, not cut. What did I just do? Z. Okay. Copy. Copy. All right. So we're going to start. Oh my God. The thing don't want to move. All right. So this is the first tweet. Okay. Jeremy Corbyn quote, Megan is a very interesting, very clear thinking woman. I've got a lot of time for her. I don't know why media wanted to build her up into a negative figure, which she's not. She's an intelligent, thoughtful woman, Jeremy Corbyn on Meghan Markle. Okay. It came on my timeline. Okay. Yesterday. So I thought I start this video with this tweet. And I think it's old as well. Okay. So there's some comment here. 
Princess Meghan Markle is 2024 most influential figure in fashion, investment, women empowerment, and youth support. She is a beacon of hope and catalyst for progress. Meghan Markle. Okay, that's another blag. I guess this squad, that's uh, another blag as well. I guess one of the squad is uh, writing this. But let's read some of the caption. They make, uh, they, they are very interesting. Uh, Princess Meghan Markle is, okay, influential progress. Okay, that's the same thing here. Black is a symbol of sophistication. White represents purity and simplicity. Navy exude elegance and camel tones evoke warmth and luxury. These are elements that define Princess Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex fashion choices. Okay, this will be for the squaddies who are into fashion. How many more does she has? Okay, that's a bit more. I don't want to focus too much on all of this. These are things I've already covered like this and all of that so let me leave that alone okay i didn't know it has all of this <laughs> that's one of the negative things with me when i don't read everything before i share it with you because i want to share my um initial reaction when i read those stuff so i don't go through it beforehand just the first caption next to it they have a beautiful aura polo on netflix that's an image that's them laughing I think that's when uh, he was asking uh, if Heavy speaks Spanish and Megan was like, yes, <laughs> they're joking with each other. Okay, have, that's the question, and treat their family deplorable, sold them out. Nah, nah. Okay, the situation that they are in now, Heavy and Megan, is because of what was put on them. Okay, if you listen to the Oprah interview, they were willing to stay. Was the move about getting away from the UK press, because the press, as you know, is everywhere, mm. or was the move because you weren't getting enough support from the firm? It was both. Both. I need to do this for my family. This is not a surprise to anybody. It's really sad that it's got to this point, but I've got to do something for my own mental health, for my wife's, um, and for, for Archie's as well, because I could see where this was headed. So in conclusion, if you'd had the support, you'd still be there? Without question. Yeah. I'm sad that, that what's happened has happened. Mm. But I know and I'm comfortable knowing that we did everything that we could to make it work. And we did everything on the exit process the way that, the, the way that it should have been With done. With as much respect. With as much and, respect. Oh my God, we just did everything and, we could to, pro to protect yeah. them. But they didn't want them there. Began to address Granny about the five options. Your Majesty, you've seen the five options? Yes, she said. We all had. They'd been emailed to us. Five different ways of proceeding. Option one was continuance of the status quo. Meg and I don't leave. Everyone tries to go back to normal. Option five was full severance. No royal role, no working for granny, and total loss of security. Option three was somewhere in between. A compromise, closest to what we'd originally proposed. I told everyone assembled that, above all, I was desperate to keep security. That was what worried me most, my family's physical safety. I wanted to prevent a repeat of history, another untimely death like the one that had rocked this family to its core 23 years earlier, and from which we were still trying to recover. I'd consulted with several palace veterans, people who knew the inner workings of the monarchy and its history, and they all said option three was best for all parties. Meg and I living elsewhere part of the year, continuing our work, retaining security, returning to Britain for charities, ceremonies, events. Sensible solution, these palace veterans said, and eminently doable. But the family, of course, pushed me to take option one. Barring that, they would only accept option five. We discussed the five options for nearly an hour. At last, the bee got up and went round the table, handing out a draft of a statement the palace would soon be releasing, announcing implementation of option five. Wait, I'm confused. You've already drafted a statement? Before any discussion? Announcing option five? In other words, the fix was in this whole time? This summit was just for show? No answer. So what, I mean, what were they supposed to do? 
force themselves onto the pe to the institution when they literally said they don't want them there. William hired Simon Case to literally kick Harry out, and in return, Meghan had to go too. So now they have to readjust themselves, and they have to make money, and do all of that. It's their fa family who backstabbed them. Then we will wait and see what happened in court because a lot will be revealed. Okay. My goodness. And they have the whole machinery against them. Next to it. Oh, I need to black while I'm there. All right, let's do this. Let's see. Here. Is this one of the squad? Nope, nobody's following. Let's black so I don't come across these things. Okay, who is that I have? Okay, they have a beautiful over. Okay, pull on Netflix. Okay, these are the Rangers. Black. All right, let's go to the next tweet. Okay, Polo Review, unlocking the secret of Polo High Society on Netflix. This is exactly what this docuseries did for me. It brings me into a world I knew nothing about, educates me on the ins and outs, and keeps me wanting to know more. Well done. Okay, so that's uh, another thing I'm not going to read, just a caption. I think it was the first episode that sort of explained how the game is played. And then after that, it went on to the... Uh, family dynamics and uh, how they try to win and all of that okay I really hope there's more episodes I want to know more well said it was fun to watch you are such a liar okay I can't see that one okay these are people that I black of course not I'm not you so it was meant to be black let's pause that GIF I already did I can write detailed comprehensive review because I watched it all right. Never thought I would. <laughs> they probably saying some negative things without even watching it. Okay. This is extra here. Never thought I would be interesting in a show about Polo, but here I am watching this Netflix docu series, and it's pretty good. Polo Netflix. All right. That's for comment. I'm gonna add this to the list. I watched yesterday and was surprised how hooked I quickly became. By episode five, I was on the edge of my seat. Okay, Sam, they definitely need more episode. Please give a love or like on Netflix. That's the heart here. One of the things the squad was saying, uh, I think on my video yesterday, because when I watched it, I did watch all of it. When I got to the last one, when I know it was done, and uh, they were putting the, on the screen what happened to the player who got injured, and then I, I stopped it after I read that. But um, I didn't continue. Apparently, there is uh, somewhere where you could uh, put a like or something. Someone told me that on the comment section in one of my videos. So I need to do that. All right, next to it. Uh, observation of something amazing about Polo on Netflix. There are no villains, no one to hate. Spoilers. Big Timmy stuff, but the dinner with his son redeemed him to me because he recognizes value and love his son. With Pam and Louis, she, if he takes heed to what she said, okay, exposes the other beautiful aspect of Polo that is right under his nose that he doesn't recognize, and that's a beautiful thing. That's an ad. Okay, I was thinking exactly this. I was expecting a reality TV element and that there would be a clear antagonist, but there wasn't any. They did a great job of showing everyone's heated intensity, but also their vulnerabilities. It was very humanizing. There's something, there's an interview that Megan did, I believe, near the end of 2023 last year with variety where megan was saying there's a lot coming uh the shows that she will be creating that will make people wants to feel things okay i'll put that clip here i think i have it something to do with it but good shows are everlasting that's what you're doing now you have now come into hollywood in a protosorial capacity what is inspiring you and and as you're kind of looking to make these new projects what is the thing that is you know driving the, the work that you're going to put out into the business. Things that make people feel, I was gonna say good, but it's more than that. Things that make people feel something, right? And feel a sense of community, but we have so many exciting things on this slate. I can't wait until we can announce them, but um, I'm just really proud of what we're creating. My husband is loving it too. 
It's really fun. We're here anytime you want to make those announcements. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. We'll figure out, we'll, we'll get in touch then. Yeah. You're thrilled to have you here as one of our, our honorees, our alumni. So nice to see you. Thank you so much. Okay, so this is the thing that um, the kind of show that Harry, Megan wants to produce and put out there because the things that we are seeing almost everywhere, there's no, you can't even sit down and watch it with your family. All right, so with that, you see her tough because I could see myself and that uh, I think that's him, Tim, the NDN guy with son Timmy, I think that's his name. I could see myself and Tim kind of uh, personality because I'm very competitive so and I talk about this on my last video because my son for instance later today I will be going on in his game but I try not to be emotionally involved in his sport but I try to ask him what do you want what do you need do you need me to or hire someone to help you because if I become emotionally involved and he's not doing what I see that he should be doing then I might start saying things where he will hate the game so this is why I say I could see myself and Tim you know personality with his son because I recognize that I take a step back because my husband who's you know usually play with my son and things like that involved Sometimes when I see him screaming at my son, this is the part I do not like for myself in that. And at the same time, I do not want him to stop being involved because my son is always asking my husband question about basketball. And when my husband starts explaining and things like that, he gets too emotionally involved. And that's when I come in to tell him to calm down. Okay? So we don't want him to hate the game. We want him to enjoy it. Like this morning, yesterday actually, when he was leaving for school and he had a game. And I told him, I give him my best advice. Stop being too, uh, yes, he wants to win, but it seems like he's overthinking things. Instead, you know the basics of the game. You know the rules of the game. Try to enjoy it. That's what I told him. Try to enjoy it. And if you get a shot, you get a shot. All right? But don't overthink things where, where you're thinking too much, where you're messing up. This kind of thing. So his game was away. I didn't go. But this one is going to be home. I'm going to go and watch him later today. If my youngest wants to go, I'll take him too. But if he doesn't want, that's fine too. Okay. So did I read this? All right. I highlighted it. Okay, I was thinking exactly this. I was expecting a reality TV element and that there would be a clear antagonist, but there wasn't any. They did a great job of showing everyone's heated intensity, but also their vulnerabilities. It was very humanizing. Polo on Netflix. The respect they have for each other, their teammates and their rivals and their horses is truly amazing to see a glimpse of. I have come away so impressed with the true sportsmanship. Yeah, when the guy got uh, injured, um, both teams did not want to play and they had to postpone it. The other thing as well, um, damn, what was I thinking? Um, I forgot what I was thinking, but uh, let's move on. I think at the moment when I was rec originally recording that, I was thinking about um, what I thought when they first announced that Polo on Netflix was going to be shown, the thing that I was looking forward to was the transportation of the horses. That's what I was thinking um, in terms of different countries. But um, when you watch the, the docuseries, they did not play overseas. The episodes were shown. They were playing in, um, in the States. So there was no focus on transporting the horses. That's what I was looking for, overseas transportation. I've seen, you know, when we drive uh, to the country and things like that, the way they transport the horses by, you know, a car and they have the, the trailer in the back and the horses are in there. But I wanted to see the transportation overseas, if it's plane or if it's uh, ships or something like that. So, yeah, I think that's what I was thinking at that moment, and I lose a uh, chain of thought. Okay, so let's get back to the original recording. 
And Big Tim is like a typical Indian parent or generally Asian. It's not a stereotype. Trust me. That's the life here. They really be like that. Yeah. Like I heard, my husband is uh, Asian. I could see that. And I could, I mean, he's just passionate about the sport. Yeah. But um, I, I guess they have to find a balance. That's the thing here. Just find a balance. And I think he recognized this at the end, like this person was saying. At the end, you know, it, uh, he redeemed himself in one tweet that I read, uh, could have been yesterday. All right, next one. You don't know how much I love this image of Harry looking straight into the camera. All right. Prince Harry is a healthy looking man who is well fed and taken care of by his wife, Queen. It's a trigger for the leftovers, trolls, and their minions. <laughs> The squad or something. They like to trigger the other one. Just saying positive thing about Harry and Meghan. Their air is fading away right in front of their... <laughs> right in front of their eyes. That's egg. That's she's making reference to. Their air is fading away right in front of their eyes. And they are laser focused on the independent royals business. Ha. Okay. There they are here. Both images look really nice. So she flipped this over. So to look at the same direction as Megan. There's Megan. Everybody's looking at her. Look at very not too many things on her. She looks very glamorous. All right. You can see the two guys. There's that. Yep. <laughs> the image in the back. You support people who ghosted their family, lies, uh, like professionals, hypocrite. Okay. Let me pause this and respond. So there's me here who respond. Here, go mind these people's business. Maybe I should put pointing down here. Oh, damn it. Where is it? He won't do it. All right, that's the link below here. I know you don't care about Harry and Meghan. Oh, someone responded. Okay, you're the hypocrite as you don't give a F about the horses. Do you protest this vigorously when William plays polo? Let's face it, you're just a bitter troll. And Prince Harry said to tell you that he's sorry for you. All right, so there's that. This is what I posted, okay? Slumlord, go mind these people's business. And then let's black. All right, so let's go to the next tweet. I'm telling you, those trolls, <laughs> sometimes I, I respond to them, sometimes I don't. All right, next tweet. This. Oh my god, the squad with their GIF. Oh, Megan Marco being a sweetheart when Prince Harry scored a goal. The smile and the clap. I know that's right, sis. That's your man. There's the heart here. Seeing Serena Williams and Nacho's family also happy for Harry. For Prince Harry when was so sweet. I love the family. Harry and Megan have a wow. Polo. There's that. Look at that. <laughs> For Martin, that looks okay. I won't be able to play the music in the background. Yes, girl, there's the loving eye. Yes, okay, let's go to the next one. Late at night, I bet he whispers in her ear, Speak Spanish to me, babe. <laughs> I had to put this because those squad or something they're talking about, you know, when um. In the polo doc is serious where the guy was asking if Harry speaks Spanish. He knows Harry doesn't speak Spanish. Or maybe he does. He's just not comfortable speaking it. And there's me respond here. Harry saying that to Megan. Say my name in Espanol. <laughs> without the Wednesday part. Three people like it. Talk to me nice. Nice. Uh, Jodiva. The calm. The squad are just having fun. While she's asking him to beg <laughs> in his British accent. <laughs> You guys see the uh, beginning of this video with the Christmas thing? Should we, should we start? No? Ladies first? No, say it, because I think it sounds really nice with your accent. Well, Archwell Audio. Arch, yeah. Archwell Audio. I mean... Really? <laughs> shall we? Yeah, let's do it. Oh my goodness, that's the laugh. Fear the squad are just having fun. Okay, or Joe, why you do us like that? There's the laugh. Why am I imagining heavy channeling Gomez Adam, Megan? You spoke Spanish, start passionately kissing her arms. Oh, there's that. The Spanish accent is very sexy. Oh, saucy. There's all of that. The squad are just having fun with that. I can actually see him doing that. LOL. <laughs> the, the squad took the 
Polo Dacusivius to another level here. That's completely different thing. Next tweet. Oh my God, the squad were making fun of this guy. Did I ever have it on the, uh, on the list? Okay, I love Luis de Valles. I hope I pronounced the last name. Oh my goodness. Okay, I love his relationship with his son. And he'll be so good as a girl dad. Okay. Yeah, he played tough, but you could see the softness in him. I guess the same thing I was just saying about my son, where uh, he needs to enjoy the game, calm down a little bit. He and okay, from my understanding, he learned this what when he was around forty, and then he got hooked. So he's becoming not only he's putting too much pressure on himself. Yeah, it's an expensive spot as well. So I, I can't get on these people's mind to... Okay, what am I saying? What I want to say here is that I think he's taking it too serious where it become overwhelmed. Look at in the, in the docu series where he's practicing and he, big, he went late onto the game. It, he needs to take some time off. Take a step back and relax and... I don't know. I think he over... How will I say that? It may not be that. It, like I said, it's just my opinion. It may not be exactly what I'm saying. But based on what I saw on the docuseries, he's taking it too, too, too deep. Yes, you need to practice. Yes, you need to, you know, invest in all of that. And yes, you need to win. But when you overdo it, I think he's overdoing it. That's why he's putting so much pressure on himself and then things tend to go sour for him when it's time to play. He was practicing and forget timing and he went late to the game and then he got stopped trying to rush to the game because he was late. You know, so he needs to take a step back. As a matter of fact, that day of the game, wake up early and practice. That, that's for me. I'm not him, okay? Practice early and then give yourself maybe an hour or two. Okay, practice a little bit and then from the time you know leading to the game, just relax. Do some sort of meditation. How are you gonna play the game or something like that? But anyway, that's him. Okay, that's his money. He invests on it. <laughs> the squad were making fun of, were laughing about uh, this, you know, they sold their houses and things like that. <laughs> like not me okay i love his relationship with his son okay i read that already the ser the serious one have been quite uh entertaining without him and pam and pam's mom yeah the mother-in-law oh my god put li literally center him and i think he knows that the the mother-in-law literally put him in his place things that he needs to hear he may not like it but he needs to hear that I love Pam's mom, putting it straightforward. Okay, this man is fine, me too, Silver Fox. When he spoke French at the end, I love multifaceted man. He is so obsessed with when he does the thing. Yes, this is what I see here. He is so obsessed with winning. Okay, when he cries at the ultrasound. Was it at the end or so when he realized uh, the season is over? I really didn't catch the part when he was crying at the ultrasound. I remember, yes, the wife was showing the uh, on the cell phone and thing. Maybe I missed that. But at the end, when uh, he lost all the games at the season and he was crying and, you know, the talk, the little talk he had with the wife and, uh, yeah, he's too obsessed with it. He needs to take a step back a little bit. Okay, that man says F more than anything. There's a laugh here. People saying Louis cursed too much. And, <laughs> okay, I didn't like him at the start off with but warm up to him by the end. Okay, so that's the thing uh, some of the squad were saying. The things that makes you want to feel, especially Megan and that interview she did with uh, uh, Variety. Okay, and I always said that woman, they, Variety should send her to do more interview like that. She got so much out of Megan in a short period of time. Okay, I want to practice, but I got this baby shower to go to. Louis, that's the squad making fun of him, the same guy. Dude, it's your baby shower, LOL. This guy is hilarious. I mean, I could understand him. When he said, guys, don't go through that, I could see it, I could see it, okay? 
but when I had my baby shower, uh, you know, I had men and women come into it. My husband was there. It was like a picnic for my firstborn. It was like a picnic. We went to the park. Oh, so that's the squad making fun of it. This is it here. By the way, he sold that dream house for that one season. And even after his team lost, homeboy was in Argentina still playing while his wife is home, heavily pregnant and taking care of his son. There's a laugh here. Girl, that lady is a saint. <laughs> Polo on Netflix. <laughs> I need some air. Uh, I guess they get each other. I don't know. Did they say what happened to... Did they divorce or uh, the kid mother? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, there's the squad feeding off the first one, the, f the tweet. Girl, his wife is a whole saint. There's a laugh here because she was with all of his shenanigans. LOL. Doesn't she play... Uh, she doesn't play polo, but she rides horses too. So maybe there's that connection with them. Okay, I love his mother-in-law. She don't play. That's why his mother-in-law knows just what to say to him. I like her. Yep. OMG, I'm so on the fence about him. He's this strange mixture of sweet teddy bear and an asshole. <laughs> oh, Louis Crazy Self is my favorite. That's the laugh here, girl. I was like, what in the hell? Okay, sis, I was rolling. I was like, no, he didn't say that. LOL. Okay, he was under control by his mother-in-law, who then released him until he made a speech. <laughs> Love it. And no AC. Yup, that the baby shower. Mommy and law play no games. <laughs> she kept it real. That's right. Louis is a wonderful hot mess. Pam tolerating his wackiness is a whole show on itself. Okay, he's gorgeous too. Okay, and he end up losing. That's the thing. He's putting too much pressure on him. And that's the cry that he got at the end. That's the one that I saw. I didn't see the baby shower. Or, uh, not baby shower. The ultrasound one. All uh, right. Louisa Mess. And a patty mouth. Polo on Netflix. Right. The squad are laughing. Let's go to the next one. It's making reference to Louis as well. There's that Louis. <laughs> he looks like those fat boys at college. <laughs> Yeah, he put too much pressure on himself. And not only that, I don't know how old is he. He, I don't know. He said he learned it at 40. And most people start learning polo at a young age. So give him credit that he's that at that level already. But he's putting too much pressure on him. It's like he's trying to catch up with some players that have been in there since they were young. Look at the other guy, the, the best player from Argentina, where his son... Okay, who's what, 22 or something? Or maybe younger. I'm confusing with the other one uh, in terms of age. Okay, his son beat him and they started learning at a very young age. So he needs to take this into perspective. Stop putting too much pressure on himself. He's playing with some kids who's already, I don't know, out, out doing those professionals who've been doing it all their lives. Okay, he needs to take a step back, learn to calm himself down, do some meditation or something. Maybe he should uh, include that as part of his uh, practice aspect to calm himself down, be center with himself. Imagine the game before he even play it, this type of things. Okay, now I'm scared to watch this show with this thirst trap. Okay, there's another thing with Invictus, People Magazine. All right, so let's not go into it. I'm almost done with this. I have one more after this. Okay, so this is the guy that I was talking about. They've been playing for a very long time. And his son as well. When he was, uh, when his wife was uh, pregnant, um, not pregnant, um, uh, delivery, uh, giving birth. Okay, he was in the middle of a game. He had to stop and go to the hospital to see his wife. These are the people he's competing with. Okay, these guys are veterans in, in the game. And then their kids have been playing since they were young. It's like second nature to them. And him, uh, Louis, just picked it up at the age of 40. Okay, and for him to be at that level, that's something he should be proud of. And then now, now that he understands the game and he's able to manage and control the horse and things like that, he should 
focus on center himself imagine uh uh what's the word not imagine imagine is part of it but um meditate okay that's the word i was looking meditate before a game okay like i was saying um uh, in the last tweet where he what i would have done wake up early practice do my regimen or whatever but leave a good gap after the practice leading up to the game to give yourself a little time to relax calm the body down to get to the game and then you release everything at the game he needs to do that in my humble opinion okay anyway guys uh adolfo is my main man the real king of polo humble and kind after all these years still hungry after over three decades this is the thing i'm saying they've been playing it for a very long time after over three decades of competing against everybody in polo against the youth and the um ogs what's that originals only a real giant can carry a legacy like that i bow okay there's that okay i like him too very much the show was interesting, educational, and well produced by the team, Harry and Megan. Same here. I wanted him to win. Okay. What is this here? Okay. On December 11, that's extra, the Duchess of Sussex 43 was photographed alongside friend Kelly McKenzie. All right. So this will be on another video. All right. That's the party that Megan went to. I want to finish this one out. Let me focus on my list. I didn't put this on the list. Okay. Let me like it. Maybe I could come back to it. Next tweet okay so there's that here this is the other uh kid that i almost got confused with the other guy's uh son okay i like this family papa finally showed his softer side timmy dudas and tim senior duda polo on netflix executive produced by harry and megan it's 41 seconds there'll be a screenshot okay i can play this due to copyright all right so that's him talking with his son he has four shots as a ball player, as good as any 10 ball player. Looks good. He can reach anyone at 140 yards to their stairs. It's him that I'm saying I could see myself, you know, behaving like that if I was emotionally involved with my son's sports. There's my youngest, for instance. He does track and field. For some reason, I'm surprised he even like it um, because he's so lazy. Um, and one of the race that he ha uh, he did, he did very poorly. And I told him, does he like it? And one thing that he told me, he said, his coach uh, told him to finish the thing. I mean, I could understand. And every race you have to finish. And I said, is that the only thing your coach told you? And uh, I mean, they are a new kind of team and they just putting that team together and whatever i guess to get them started it, that was the thing that they told them but i said but the whole point of uh, playing sports is to win you have to show me that you want to win but he was like but my coach told me to finish i said yes but you last what's the point of me going and seeing you not even trying i could understand he finished last trying that's the part here trying to finish whatever spot that he finished in but he was not trying there was no pushing there was no determination in him so at the end of the thing i show him my frustration i said look i want to come and see you race where you put in your best try your best i don't care if you win or lose but the part where i want to see you do is to try try to win i didn't see that in him so and the next time that he went yeah there were some players that were athletes that were much better than him but he was trying he finished seventh so i was very impressed in that and i let him know this is what i want to see okay it would have been nice i didn't tell him that maybe i did i don't know it would have been nice that he finished first but he was playing uh, racing against some who's been doing it for a very long time but finished seventh that's not bad at all compared to last time he finished last I had to tell him I said what's the point of me coming and watch you where you're not even giving your all and I said the whole point of playing any sport no matter what sport it is is to win but you weren't not trying to win 
You're wasting your time jogging around when you should put your whole potential out there and you're not doing that. So this is what I mean. I could see myself in him. If I get emotionally involved, I'll be, you know, pushing them so hard. But that part I had to tell him because I didn't see any motivation in him. And I said, if you're doing it for me or for my husband or your dad, don't do it. You have to want it. So when I put that perspective in him, that's, uh, he did, he's been doing much better. Okay, so let's continue listening. This is why I say I understand him. I truly understand him. I could see myself in him talking like that to my kids. All right? My oldest is a different story. It's not many sitting ten ball players can do that. But that's just a fact. To me, started the Open at one level and he finished the Open at a different level. And that's winning to me. They're called shot names. See, this is the thing here, evaluating the, the whole season, the process in the middle of it. This is the hard work. You have to push, you know, you have to do your best. And this is where he's pushing and uh, screaming and all that. I could see he loved the sport, but I don't think he hate the sun. But he has to be very careful to not push too much where the sun, I don't know, I think he likes it will not want to be uh, doing this with them anymore. Okay, so that's the part, the boundary that he has to be very careful in. Uh, at, I should say. So, if he plays simple polo, it's hard to be there. So I'm not worried about it. Uh, before 30, he'll be there. And he's just, he's extremely bright. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. So go, go watch uh, the thing. It's a small clip. Oh, it's continue. Let's listen. I'm just gonna put screenshot, Before but you could be there. you could listen uh, to the audio though. Before thirty, he'll be there, and he's just he's extremely bright. Uh, I wouldn't comment on the way he looks, but <laughs> he has a great and he's just an amazing kid. He makes me proud every day. He is the, he's the greatest joy I have, and that's what I say I'm a very very rich man because of him. It's not the money in the bank or what I own or etc. It's him. It's very simple. That's the connection they have with the um, he has with his son, and I'm glad he let his son know that. Sometimes they need to hear it. The same way they're hearing the negative, they have to hear the positive, and he let his son know that, and that's good. I love you and really appreciate you. Love you too. Love you too. I'm so so Thank proud you. of you. Well done. Great season <laughs> so much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Michael, this is the death thing. It's so good. Okay. And, and that's where the wife come into play, to balance the husband out. Okay. Where the husband is push, push, push. And then, like, I don't like when he's yelling. But at the end here, this is where everything come into perspective. I mean, he, they understand each other. But anyway, so that's that. Let's do a prayer for family. The last one I did was protection. Let's say family. Should I leave protection in here? Let's see what comes up. Okay, so let's say family protection. Now I'm adding protection into it. Okay, here are some prayer. Okay, let's see if there's an image here. Let's do this one. Prayer for family protection. Okay, Heavenly Father, we ask for protection for this family. We are nothing but sheep in your herd. We pray that when one of us gets into trouble, please deliver us. When one of us is in danger, please save us. When we travel, please carry us safely. And when we fall in the devil's trap, please deliver us. Carry us for the devil part. Please prevent us from falling into the devil's trap. That's what we should do. Okay. We should never be fall into the devil's trap. Prevent us from falling into the devil's trap. That's the only correction I will put on this here. Carry us on your wings and shield us with your armor. Thank you for answering our prayers. All right, so that is that. Please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share. If you want to support this channel, there's a PayPal link and a Cash App link in the description. You could donate. Those who have donated, thank you. Oh my God, I have more to share with you. Now it's 352. If you look at the very first video I did on our part of your service, I think I started since one. 
I'm gonna be editing for a very long time. So there's more I need to share with you. I wanted to keep them separate. Okay, now this is the party, Megan at a party. All right, let's go on Twitter. This will be the next tweet that I will be sharing with you. And the next video. Oh, it started with this, but technically it will have all of this. Okay, the second tweet after that on the next video will be this. <laughs> That's not the party. These are the things I'm putting leading up to. Okay, the third one on the next video, it will be that. Okay, this is where the party starts here. Okay, so let me stop now. Thank you for watching.